Hey, what's up guys? It is Tuesday, January 19th, 2016. Here at the gym, figured I would go over my back traps and shoulders routine with you guys a little bit differently than I usually do. So I'm going to be talking to you guys, giving you my commentary right here. We're going to be playing the clips over the top of it. So um, as you guys know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know how I like to hit my back. I like to hit it from four angles. Those angles are horizontal, vertical, diagonal, and then from the ground. I always like to start off with my vertical pull first. So as you guys are going to see, I'm not doing weighted pull-ups today, actually switching it up, I grabbed a smaller, kind of like that curved bar, and what I did was, it was almost like a closer grip lat pull-down, and what I want you guys to do on this closer grip lat pull-down is really focus on pulling through your elbows. So you're going to keep your elbows a little bit tighter as you pull down and really squeeze that back. Almost pretend there's like a pencil or a tennis ball there in between uh, your back and you're squeezing your shoulder blades together to really pinch um, like that pretend imaginary tennis ball or whatever you got back there. So um, really focus on keeping those elbows in and driving back with those first. Don't be flaring out a ton. Really be keeping everything tight and then squeezing that back. You're gonna feel a much more different and tighter squeeze than say like a weighted pull-ups or a regular lat pull-down or something like that with this closer grip lat pull-down. The second exercise that I went into was my from the ground movement, my T-bar rows. What I like to do with these, I like to go heavy. So, my form necessarily isn't super tight and clean here. I am trying to pull very heavy weight for anywhere between eight to 12 reps. Now, some people might say, Trey, if your form's not perfect, you're not gonna be building your back. For me, I see a lot more growth with this exercise in particular if I'm going very heavy. If I'm going heavy, I notice a lot more growth from this exercise. So I start. I usually start with around uh, three plates. I'll go 12 to 15 reps, still kind of warming up. But once I get into four plates, that's when I really start working. I'll aim for 12, do four plates for two sets, then I'll go up to five plates, do five plates for two sets. And for those five plate sets, I aim anywhere, again, eight to 12 reps, really trying to push myself with very heavy weight. Next, we are working the diagonal pull. So it's kind of like an isolateral Pull. I don't really know the name of the machine, but I love it. I love this machine. When you pull down, you're really able to squeeze. You almost feel like you're squeezing your rear delt, but you're working your back here, and it is fantastic. I love this. So on this exercise, I really, really recommend slowing it down, lowering the weight on this exercise so you can really get a fantastic squeeze. Unlike those uh, T-bar rows, from the ground like we did on the last set. This one, lighten the weight a little bit, focus on that squeeze, really tear up your back. The final back exercise that we did was just a single arm cable row. What I want you guys to do here, again, lower the weight on this exercise, and as you're going to see, I am rotating my hand as I go through this motion. You're really able to stretch at the bottom of the movement, and then once you get to the top, you're really able to squeeze. So um, focus on rotating that wrist, making it a fluid motion, so you don't pull all the way and then flip your wrist right at the end, or vice versa. Make sure it is a fluid twist, a fluid row on each of those exercises. Those are the four, uh, the four angles that I'm hitting my back from on the back portion of this exercise, and I got into three exercises for my shoulders and my traps. The one I really focused on with my traps was just an upright row. So again, I'm not going too heavy on this exercise either, just really focusing on the squeeze. Again, pulling it up, squeezing at the top, and then stretching all the way back down. And again, 10 to 12, sometimes even 15 reps here. You're just really trying to tear up the muscles. The next exercise is just me hitting some side laterals with the cables as well. Again, 10, 12, 15 reps here if you want to. Um, for my traps and my shoulders, I get a lot of indirect work from my chest workouts and from my back workouts. I hardly ever target my front delts because I get so much work from them on my chest days and I hardly ever really kind of work my traps. Like specifically, I hardly ever work my traps or my side or my rear delts or anything like that because on my back days, again, they get a lot of indirect work. So you can throw specific exercises in there if you want, but the final exercise I did was just some uh, rear delt face pulls. Again, lighter weight, 
focus on the squeeze, 10, 12 to 15 reps, really tear up the muscles. But that is back traps and shoulders for Tuesday, January 19th. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this style of commentary. I might start doing this a little bit differently. Just try to give it some variance here. But about to head back now, get a post-workout meal. I've still got class from six to nine tonight, but then I'm going to see the Revenant later. So pretty excited for that, but I will see you guys in the next clip. This just feels like you're leaning a bit more. Oh, Cameo in that one, I hope he gets a little more dirt for kind of like more like some Aggie. And he kind of changed that up. And I like the fact that the first official topic. Well, uh, it's our first show in 35.3 million. So if we stop the work before it's awakened. All right guys, so just finished up my last class of the night. Goes till nine, kept me like, I don't know, 10 minutes afterwards teaching us how to use a stupid library website, which is as common knowledge as you can get. But I guess there's some people that don't know how to use the library website. But now I have to hustle back so I can make it to see the Revenant at 9.35, but, ah frustrated but oh well at least I still get to go see the Revenant and tonight today uh, January 19th is National Popcorn Day <laughs> fun fact so my theater is actually serving free medium popcorns for free today and it's a Tuesday night I'm going to see a movie that's been out for two and a half weeks so hopefully my theater is pretty empty and I can just chill and eat free popcorn the whole time but we'll see um, yeah, I'll let you guys know what I think of the Revenant after it's done. Alright guys, so just got home from the theater. Let's talk the Revenant for a second, alright? So, as you guys probably know, if you follow movies or you follow movie talk at all, the Revenant just came out about two weeks ago. It's got Leonardo DiCaprio in it. It has Tom Hardy in it. It's one of the most anticipated movies that has come out recently. Everybody's been talking about Leo's performance, how this is going to be the one that wins him an Oscar. I want to talk to you guys about what I thought of The Revenant. Now, there's a lot of hype behind this movie. I was very excited going into the theater, and I'm not saying that I'm not excited leaving the theater, um, but what I want to do is break the movie down for a second. Uh, cinematically, the cinematography in The Revenant, this might be one of the most beautiful movies I have ever seen. This was shot so well and it had so many long uncut shots that just kept the camera rolling throughout the scene and it just went from character to character to character and the camera never stopped. It was just one long shot and I love that. I love that about this movie. Um, I thought that part of The Revenant was incredible. If this movie does not win Best Cinematography for 2015, there's something wrong because this was the most beautiful movie I have seen in a very long time. And the way it was shot, again, with those big, long, uncut scenes, that was perfect. I loved that about The Revenant. Acting, the performances in The Revenant were incredible. Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy is not getting enough credit for his supporting role in this movie. He was great. But then again, that's what you come to expect from Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy is fantastic. Tom Hardy is a great actor, and he showed it in this movie. This might be the one that wins Leo the Oscar. I'm going to say it right now because Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio in this movie was fantastic. His performance was great. I mean, from start to finish, I was... I'm. I tried to not go in with a kind of uh, preconceived notion that, oh, Leo has to be good in this movie or I'm going to be disappointed. I had a, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I went in thinking Leo has to be incredible in this role or I'm going to be disappointed. And I'm going to think that maybe, no, he doesn't deserve the Oscar this year. And he exceeded. He absolutely exceeded my expectations. He was phenomenal in this movie. All the performances were good. Every single character in this movie was believable. It never took you out of the story, ever. No performance took you out of the movie. 
great, great performances throughout. There were a lot of scenes in this movie that I thought uh, could have been done better. I'm not going to go into it because I don't want to talk about spoilers. But um, when it comes to the overall story, I thought the first hour of this movie was one of the best movies I have seen in a long time. In a very, very long time. The first hour of this movie, I was in 100%. And then the next hour and a half happened. And I can't tell you how many times I looked at my watch, how many times I saw my phone start to light up in my pocket and was like, well, maybe, maybe I'm the only person in the theater. Uh, I'll check it real quick. You don't know how many times I lost interest and lost attention in this movie because I'm not going to say the story fell apart because the story was still good, but it was so boring. So boring. And you know what? That last hour and a half undid everything the first hour built up. Everything. And I wanted this movie to be so good, but for me, I wanted a good movie from start to finish, not just a good movie from start to about an hour in. I wanted a good movie from start to finish. So for me, I'm honestly going to say when I saw 13 Hours last week, I enjoyed that movie more than I enjoyed The Revenant. And that was a Michael Bay movie. But for me, this is why I love movies. Because for me, I can sit here and tell you all these things I loved about this movie while I still didn't enjoy it. So even though I loved aspects of it, I didn't enjoy the movie. I didn't really like it. I didn't love the movie overall, even though there were aspects of it that I thought were great. But all film is subjective. You might think The Revenant is the best movie you've ever seen. And I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. My favorite movie of 2015 was Jurassic World, and a lot of people thought that was garbage. But that's what I love, and that's why I like film, because it is so subjective. Something that I think is crummy and boring, somebody might be completely in love with, like The Revenant. Something that other people think is trash, like Jurassic World, I'm in love with. So that's why I love film. I know I'm kind of getting off on a tangent right now, but... I just wanted to say, that is one reason I do love movies so much, because it is so subjective. You can talk for hours and hours and hours about movies because nobody's opinion is the same. And because of that, it brings everyone together. So um, that's why I love film. Back to The Revenant. There were aspects of it I thought were great and fantastic, but overall, I didn't love it. Uh, do I recommend going to see it? Absolutely. because. Cinematically, it was just perfect. The cinematography, the cinematography and the performances in this movie warrant the ticket price, for sure. Um, but for me, not my favorite one. But this is going to wrap up the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, go hit that red subscribe button. www.trekfisher.com for online personal training and apparel. Thanks again so much for watching, guys. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.